Hello, welcome to worship at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Encinitas, California. I'm Brenda Soul. I'm the rector here. I want you to know that whoever you are, wherever you are on your faith journey, we are delighted that you chose to worship with us today. You can find a bulletin online at our website, standrewsepiscopal.org, and you'll follow the links to the worship page and it'll be right there for you. Let us join now in singing the opening hymn. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us, who now know you by faith, to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Listen now for the word of God in our readings. A reading from Isaiah. Arise, shine. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. 
they all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Median and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now pray the psalm responsibly by half verse. Give the king your justice, O God. And your righteousness to the king's son. That he may rule your people righteously. And the poor with justice. That the mountains may bring prosperity to the people. And the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure. From one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field. Like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall pay tribute. And the kings of Arabia and Saba offer gifts. All kings shall bow down before him. And all the nations do him service. For he shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress. And the oppressed who has no helper. He, sh he shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence. And dear shall their blood be in his sight. A reading from Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? We observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, Bring me word, so that I may also go and pay homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left their own country by another road. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come Holy Spirit, take our lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think with them. Take our hearts and set them on fire. In the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Today we observe the Epiphany. Epiphany is one of those feast days slated for baptism. Others are the Easter Vigil, Pentecost, and All Saints. They're all celebrations that remind us of the communal nature as Christians. And it reinforces the cross shape of our faith journey. The vertical being what we think of as God interacting with humanity and the horizontal humanity acting, interacting with each other. We don't have one direction without the other. They are both inextricably linked and interdependent. They are necessary to each other, this vertical 
and horizontal movement. Whenever I prepare a baptism family, I explain to them the four levels of ordination described in the Book of Common Prayer. The first is, I should say that maybe the highest level that we think of, is the few people who will become bishops. Some of us will be ordained to the priesthood, and some will be ordained to vocational diaconate ministries. But the fourth, the fourth is actually the most important. The fourth is what happens at baptism. You all at baptism were ordained into ministry of the laity. One of the reasons why your ministry is so important is because we all are church together. A priest alone doesn't make a church. But you all have an added benefit that you may not have even considered. In your ministry as a layperson, you basically have open leeway to do whatever you think is best for your faith journey and is most beneficial for those with whom you interact. I, on the other hand, have taken a vow to obey my bishop, and my bishop has taken a vow to uphold and abide by the canons or the laws of the church. Each level of ordination comes with greater restrictions on one's ministry. But you all can live out your ministry, your particular ministry, using your God-given gifts in the way you feel most called. As we make our way from Christmas tide to Epiphany, you'll note that same shift in the revelation of Christ. At first, everything's focused on God incarnating into the world, on what God is doing for humanity. Then, as shepherds and then the magi make their way to the scene and each do their parts to declare the good news of God, Rather than just God's action, it's the laity, the everyday people, who are doing the proclaiming. So it is from this vantage point that I found this year's theme for our Epiphany celebration, that our faith journey is participatory. We are not meant to be passive observers in the reign of God, rather active participants right alongside Jesus the Prince of Peace. And in this time of COVID-related deaths, when COVID-related deaths are at an all-time high, and when dehumanizing rhetoric is used to fuel hatred, and there are those who are willing to engage in a violent assault on our nation's capital, we must all fully participate in bringing God's good news to the world, in proclaiming the truth of our Prince of Peace. The Magi didn't have it all figured out, but they participated. They're sometimes referred to as wise men or the three kings, but the translation more accurate is Magi. Magi were people trained in things like philosophy, interpreting dreams, and astrology. They weren't spiritual leaders or religious thinkers per se, but when they were asked to follow the star, they willingly obliged. But there's this sense in this passage from Matthew that they hadn't really considered what effect coming face to face with the Christ child would have upon them. Well, like so many others, they can't seem to resist that feeling that overcomes them in the presence of the Prince of Peace. The passage says, when they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. In their joy, they fully participate by opening their hearts to what's going on and to receiving for themselves, the good news of God's all-encompassing love. Further along in the passage, we find signs of their newfound loyalty. Although the Magi at first were caught up in a convoluted scheme of Herod, once they are 
the presence of the Christ child, they realize Herod has destructive plans in mind, and so the Magi go home another way. Epiphany is also a reminder that the story didn't stop at the birth of Jesus, but that the Prince of Peace came along among us so that we might be bearers of the good news. That is the ministry to which all of you are ordained. As I mentioned this week in the From My Living Room to Yours video, one of the gifts of the pandemic just might be that we have been forced into being more resourceful as creators of our own sacred space. When we can't go inside a church building, we have to explore how we might fully participate to be church in other places. So in the video, I shared the tradition of a house blessing for Epiphany. And in the prayer, in the kit, kit that I created for you, is another reminder that our participation in the ministry extends out to others. That portion of the prayer reads, bless this house and all who inhabit it. Fill us with the light of Christ so that our concern for others may reflect your love. The Prince of Peace came among us so that we would be a blessing to others. Our nation's current state of division, the political unrest, and the pandemic might feel like an awful form of darkness. This morning's psalm offers us some comfort. God shall redeem our lives from oppression and violence. But we must always read scripture while questioning how we are reflecting that good news into the world. At your baptism, you likely received a candle, if not an actual candle, a metaphorical candle for sure. And as that candle was presented to you or held in front of you, the priest said, receive the light of Christ. Shine it brightly in the world. Epiphany calls us to fully participate in being church, holding up our own little light each in our own way. Because when I let my little light shine and you join with it your little light and the rest of you join all of your little lights, we shine brightly into the world God's love that love that's all-encompassing and all-inclusive. Dear siblings in Christ, don't let anything hide your light. Let your light shine and let it shine brightly. Amen. We join together now in the prayers of the people. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. O Lord, our governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to your merciful care. That being guided by your providence, we may dwell secure in your peace. Grant to the president, vice president, president-elect, and vice president-elect of the United States, the Congress of the United States, and to all in authority, wisdom and strength to know and to do your will. Fill them with the love and truth and righteousness and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in your fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. 
for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. The peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Susan, our bishop, and all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in God's church. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, including those on our parish prayer list. We pray for the repose of the soul for Edna Crumhar, for Jerry Bonfadini, for John Campbell, for Anne Campbell. And prayers of comfort for the Crumhar family, the Bonfadini family, and the Campbell family. We have prayers of healing for Bill, the Curie, for Heather, for Laura, for the Engstrom family, for Doug, for John, for Armando, for Pat, for Sally, for Kim, for Paul, for Lois, for Paula, for Lynn, for Tom, and for Richard. We also pray for those who were affected by the pandemic, those who are suffering from or have died from the virus, for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, and the healthcare workers serving on the front lines of response. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those good things which we dare not, in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. A few announcements. Um, first, a couple of thank yous. The first thank you is to thank all of you who have sent in pledges for 2021. Your generosity continues to impress me. And thank you also to those of you who were able to stretch a little further than you had planned. Your, um, as I said, your generosity will get us through this next year. So thank you in advance for that. And it's never too late to pledge. You can pledge any time this in the year that you realize that you have some fruits of the harvest that you would like to share with God. Just find that link online. We are starting a new book in our book group this week. Our book group is known as the Deep Dive Book Group because we don't just get together and lightly have conversation, but we really de deeply dive down into how what we're reading affects our faith journey. This week, month's book is called Awareness. You'll find the information on our webpage or in the e-blast. Our tradition here is to offer birthday blessings. Actually, before I do that, the other thank you I want to offer is thank you for the ways you are supporting our decisions about how to safely gather or rather not gather. Um, 
we have been saying we're acting out of an abundance of caution. And actually, after listening to an epidemiologist to, uh, earlier this week who presented to um, the clergy and the bishop, I don't think we're being cautious enough. Um, the numbers are staggering, and they are not going to get better if we gather people together. So thank you for the ways that you uphold that decision um, and activity to wear our masks, to stay distance, and to monitor our own symptoms. Thank you. And now I wanted to say happy birthday last Sunday went to Charlotte Rowe, who turned 100. Congratulations, Charlotte. And for those of you celebrating birthdays this week, this blessing's for you. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their heart, may the peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And for those of you celebrating anniversaries, eternal God, look with favor upon the world you have made and especially upon these couples. Give them wisdom and devotion in the ordering of their lives together, that each may be to the other a strength in need, a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, and a companion in joy. Grant that their wills may be so knit together in your will and their spirits in your spirit that they may grow in love and peace with you and one another all the days of their life. Amen. Let's join together now in singing the offertory hymn. What star is this with beams so bright, more beauteous than the noon daylight? It shines to herald forth the king, and Gentiles to his crib to bring. Thus spake the prophet from afar, who told the rise of Jacob's star and eastern sages with amaze upon the wondrous token gaze. The guiding star above is bright, within them shines a clear light and leads the to seek the giver of the sign. O Jesus, while the star of grace impels us on to seek thy face, let not our slothful hearts refuse the guidance of your light to use. To the Father, heavenly light, to Christ revealed in earthly night, to God the Holy Ghost we raise our equal and unceasing praise. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now, as we gaze upon this bread and wine that was previously blessed in a Eucharistic prayer, we join together in the prayer for spiritual communion. Lord Christ, we believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since we cannot at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts. 
we unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all our heart, our soul, and our mind. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until by your grace we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. And may God's face turn toward you and bring you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be with you today and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. We now complete our worship with the closing hymn. Shine for the light of the world is come. Be